Welcome to the Nitwits, a weekly roundtable discussion on the Penn State Nittany Lions, now in its 24th season. Our panel features a longtime Penn State media and Nitwits tag team, Neil Rudell of the Alton Amir and Mark Brennan of Lions 24-7 with Fight on State. Between them, they've covered Penn State for more than 75 years. The Nitwits are hosted by WTAJ's Anderley Penwell, and each week we welcome a former Nittany Lion as our special guest analyst. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning. By Reed and Selaney Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntington. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. By Remax Results Realty Group, committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry, the answer is always Dorman's. By Star Beverage, no matter what type of weather, we are a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. By Kogan Electric, lighting the way for you. By NovaCare, Altoona and State College, we proudly support Penn State football. By Quatrini Rafferty, Attorneys at Law, Michael Roach, peace of mind after an injury or illness. By Lions 24-7 with Fight on State, your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. Welcome to Nittany Nation Overtime. Welcome to Nittany Nation Overtime. I'm your host, Andrew Lee Ponwell, and I'm joined by the Nitwits, of course, Mark Brennan, Neil Riddell, and our guest, Shane McGregor, this evening, a former Penn State quarterback and the current coach of Central Cambria. Welcome back, guys. Yeah, great to be here. Great win yesterday. Let's just get right into it. Who wants to go first? General thoughts on the win last night? Yeah, I think, you know, you have Wisconsin here and you have Auburn here and right in the middle you have Ball State. And what did Penn State do? Came out and took care of business. Wasted no time scoring twice early, up 14 nothing, up 17 to 3, and really cruised to a win. I think that's a great sign for a, a, a developing team early in the season that they were able to come out with two big games on either side of this one no trap game just took care of business got it done in one easily yeah I'm impressed with uh, some of the nuances they're making on offense uh, took Gersich a couple quarters at, at Wisconsin but been very impressive for the last six quarters I mean they're in the shotgun they're under center we didn't pay enough attention to it last week but they did even more of it this week I think it's helping the play action Clifford said as much after the game that, uh, you know, and, and they're spreading the field. It's, uh, you're such called an excellent game. And what did you think about the quarterback performance from Clifford that we saw last night? Great, and I say point guard play. Just getting it to your athletes in space, nothing crazy. You don't have to be super, dive, or maybe super intricate, but just being uh, good executors of offensive football. Yeah, another one of the keys, obviously, he had no turnovers for the second mm -hmm. straight week, and the team had no turnovers for the second straight week. And that's what we talked about last year. And Shane, you could speak to this as a quarterback, sometimes guys can try too hard. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's what Clifford did. It's not as if that's some revelation, but you saw him doing that last year. This year, doesn't it look like he's letting things come to him? We see him running the ball here. He's, he's doing what he needs to do. I almost say it, sometimes do a little less. You know, just do the simple things, do them well, get the ball to your playmakers, whether it's a little slip screen or a little dump off pass or, or come through with that big throw when you need to. But, I mean, that's going to be your job to get it to the guys where it needs to go. Well, obviously there's a good connection right away with him and Yersich. And mm -hmm. Shiraka was in a tough spot. He really couldn't meet with the kids who were going through uh, COVID. But I wonder how, as a quarterback, you were called upon these last couple years, even go back to McSorley. These guys were running the ball at times 20, 25 times a game, and Clifford 11 times yesterday, and he averaged six years, and he had two big runs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he it, seems to like it. The quarterback run game can be like that exclamation point at the end of a good sentence, so to speak, you know, to the point where he, maybe he's not your every down runner, like, a, like you, know, you got other running backs for that, but that can really, that can break a game. That can be a, a strong play whenever you need it, a timely play, because they're keen on everybody else 
you're going to need to step up and do it. You know? Yeah, and let's touch on the running game in general. I mean, you, you have 50 total yards rushing against Wisconsin. Let's face it, Penn State could have passed for 700 yards against Ball State. Ball State gave up well over 300 yards against Western Illinois. So with the athletes Penn State had, but they didn't do that. And why not? Because sooner or later, you are going to need that running game. And I think the fact that they really, they spread the ball around to different running backs, really focused, your such really focused on getting the, the ground game going. That's important going into Auburn and then obviously, you know, you have Villanova and then the Big Ten schedule. It was a balanced offense though. It was 240 rush, 253 pass. It was diverse. We saw a bunch of guys getting involved. What does it mean to have names that we all know, of course, like Dotson, and then some of the other guys stepping up and getting some of those? Well, I like the fact that they started throwing the ball more to the backs and the tight ends. I think they had eight receptions spread out between those guys. Those tight ends are big boys. Uh, and, and they got the ball to Kane uh, mm -hmm. two or three times. Lee made a good catch. I, I think these are all part and parcel to becoming a good offense. Yeah, 10 different receivers caught passes, and now obviously some of that is because they kind of clear the empty the bench late in the game, but there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you're getting young guys opportunities, and when they got in there, they were able to do some things. You know, Brenton uh, Strange, you mentioned tight end doing a good job, and then Theo Johnson getting his first career touchdown. A lot of people were a little mm -hmm. surprised, thought maybe he had one before, but getting him involved and then getting Taquan Roberson on at the end was a good thing, too. Overall, good win against Ball State. What makes that offense special, do you think, Shane, this year versus maybe years past? I mean, Clifford being in the third and pretty much third year starter, yeah. like get, if you're not going to get any more experience that, than that, yeah. really, you know. So, and being on the same page, we always used to call it like with O'Brien and, and, and Jay, we were like being the same set of eyes, seeing everything from the same set of eyes. So, when you get an offense that's doing that, especially the quarterback, um, they're doing a lot of different stuff. So, the quarterback has to know what he's doing, but it seems like he's in a spot where, and he's comfortable spot where he can do that now. Yeah. I think the depth of talent, too. I mean, obviously, in the last few years, you've had great, great players, you know, Trace McSorley, Saquon Barkley, Chris Godwin, Gasicki. But I don't think they've ever, since uh, in the Franklin era, I don't think they've had this much depth at running back, receiver, tight end, and even on the offensive line. I think they, we're not seeing a ton of offensive linemen, but I think there are guys who are ready to play if need be. Well, they so. came out, they tried to establish Kane, uh, and he ended up with 20 carries. But Lee averaged eight, eight carries, and I thought Ford looked good in, in the cameo. He got six carries. He had a 30-some yard kickoff return. He also made a really nice catch, uh, and it looked like he scored. But it was perfect because they called him down at the one, and they were able to run the quarterback sneak from under center to put, really put the game away. And the Neil, a, a, a roar went up in the press box yeah. from Neil, who's been <laughs> no, aching for the no under center. The well, box. you could cheer, cheer for you could cheer for going under center. Internal cheering. <laughs> I All like right. that. All right, well, when we come back after a break, a solid defensive performance yesterday from the Nittany Lions as well as the fans. We'll take a look at this when we come back. The Nitwits are being brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future by Monarch Cleaners for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning. By Reed and Selaney Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntington. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Welcome back to Nittany Nation Overtime. Penn State wins 44-13 on Saturday. Another solid defense performance from the Nittany Lions. What was the standout defensive moment for you guys? I'll let Neil start on this one. Well, I, I'm starting to wonder whether this has the potential to be Brad Pry's best defense. I mean, you're talking about a lot of depth. Uh, these guys are in great position. You look at the one-on-one -on -one tackling, the corners are developing. Um, the linebacker play, the, you know, the transfers they brought in, it's just very fast, and I know it's just two games so far, and we're going to find out a lot this week, but I think the, the overall speed and the position they've been in looks very impressive to me. Yeah, and I think, we, I think it goes back to depth again. Now, obviously, I don't think they're quite as deep at some spots on defense, but when you have a guy like Jesse Lucchetta, who's played a lot of football, can come in and start at that Mike linebacker position, and then when Ellis Brooks comes back off of that first quarter suspension due to targeting, 
he drops down, Luketa drops down to, uh, to, to defensive end and has a pick six. Yeah, great you know, catch. Th- yeah, and this is a guy who started every game last year, or last year, I'm pretty sure he started every game, started most of the games. For him to embrace that role, do whatever he can do, this is the kind of buy-in that really, and Shane, you could speak to this because you were on one of the teams that had a great buy-in. That's the kind of, that, that's what really good teams are all about. It's the team, the team, the team, the yeah. team. You know, and it takes a group of mature players to do that, especially older ones, if younger ones are maybe replacing them or taking some of their, their time. But when you can get that, special things can happen. When you know? uh, offense is looking to go against Lucetta, what are some of the things that quarterbacks need to be worrisome of that makes him special and makes him a great linebacker? Uh, I mean, you just got to be aware. You know, the great linebackers can play, they can play the run, they can play the pass. They're smart as well. They're the quarterbacks of the defense, you know. So it's the chess matches. Well, I do this and I do this. Or if I make this look like this, then it'll be like that. And it's it's very intriguing. It's movable chess, mm-hmm. you know, pretty much. But uh, And then you get guys who are just good athletes, you know, great players. You know, Movable can, chess with yeah humongous men. Yes. Also, <laughs> another huge element of yesterday, fans are back. First time in 651 days. We had a full full fans at Beaver Stadium. What, what was it like to be back, guys? Yeah, it, it was great. I mean, we're not, we're not supposed to be fans, but I am a fan of seeing fans back <laughs> in Beaver Stadium. I was out there for the team arrival. They had people distanced away a little bit, uh, but to see that after last year, you know, not having the fans there, Boy, what a difference. And I think I think the crowd made an impact. I mean, and I think it's really going to make an impact next week. Uh, but it, it just, it was great to see. It's a, you, it's a breath of fresh air. You, you, it, it, it's how it should be. It, it's how it needs to be. Let's face it, too. I mean, Penn State football is a special experience uh, just a few times a year. And for that to have been taken away, uh, you know, it, it just was a state of depression last year, really. And, you know, you know, I know everybody has a lot of concerns, and we all do as we continue to navigate our way, but I think people were respectful in the way that the whole thing was approached, and it was just, it was fun. It was fun to be back even in the press box. Um, well, so, I, know. You know, I sit next to Neil, part. so maybe it wasn't all that much fun. <laughs> and as a player, what makes the Beaver Stadium experience unique or different, besides just being your home venue? Oh, I mean, well, competitive advantage, one, you know, you get... I mean, that's that 12th man kind of a, a dynamic that you get. But then also it's just like sometimes you have to remind yourself when you look up in the stadium, like those are all people and they're all here for one cause. And to see that, like it's it's very special. And it's cool to like they're all here cheering for us, backing us and to have a full and on a, let's be honest, a Mac school, even week one, sometimes the stadium isn't all that full. 105,000, like so almost different, there. different vibe yesterday. You know, even just I watched it on television, but different vibe than, than what it sometimes is. You know? Do you think that the noise level will be a major adjustment for some of the new guys who didn't have that last year? Um, could be. I mean, I wondered this too. The first time I got in against Indiana State in my junior year, you know, finally got actually got in a game. You, got, you know, like for they love. They should have put you in a role. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, for love of the game, when he gets out there and he see and it's clear the mechanism, everything just kind of zeroes down. That's what you get, you know. Now, if you're not used to it, though, it could be maybe a factor. Um, but getting out there and just doing what you've been coached and practiced to do, you know, that's that's the route to, to find success. But isn't that one of the other positives of a blowout is that they were able to get a ton of young players in. Now, you know, maybe some of these guys, the Kobe Kings, the Kalen Kings, you know, maybe you're not relying on them now, but you may be an injury away from one of these true freshmen having to get out there on the field or one of the guys you know for lack of a better way of putting it redshirt freshmen they're not really but second year players you know you may be that close to getting these guys to to needing these guys and to be able to get them in at the end of that game I think was really big and one other thing I'd like to give a shout out I thought Penn State did a great job with the 9-11 you know tribute stuff I mean you know sometimes we talk about football but there are bigger things in football and Penn State absolute classy the way it went about it I thought it was really cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, You mentioned King King and Justin King got a call <laughs> yesterday because he's the last guy to be a two-way player in a game until Marquise Wilson. He, he was not. Dale and Darion, Steve Jones came up with that against Maryland a few years ago. Well, hey, I'm they talking put it in about the what Penn State reported. I, I, I reported it as well. But hey, yeah. listen, Marquise. I saw Steve Jones on the way out. He wasn't sure. Well, he, he I got a text from him today. I got, you know, he got it. But hey, listen, uh, Marquise Wilson playing offense and defense, that was pretty cool to see. And he had a catch. And he had a couple tackles, so he did well on both sides of the ball. It's like a basketball score on both sides yeah. of the ball. What about the depth? How deep, realistically, do you think Penn State is this year? Well, I think they're still tinkering with their offensive line. 
I mean, they had some different pieces that they're uh, moving around. Uh, and I think that was to what you're talking about, trying to establish that run game when you're really when it really matters. Uh, they, whether they move Miranda and Scruggs. Well, they move. Center. They just flipped Scruggs and, and Miranda, which I think is you want to get another center ready in case something happens to Miranda. Uh, but I, I think when we talk about depth, it's really t to me, it's the skill positions on offense and then the secondary. And you know, Pry, what he's able to do with his star and dime packages, we saw a lot of it. He has so many versatile defensive backs, and that's even without a guy like Keaton Ellis playing uh, yet. So they have so many different uh, options that they can do on defense because their secondary is so deep and so versatile. I was talking about where they're still seeking it. There you go. <laughs> All right, when we come back after a quick break, we saw another quarterback for the first time in a while behind John Clifford take on Robertson. He gets a touchdown, his first ever in a knitting line uniform. We'll look at that when we come back. The Nitwits are being brought to you by Remax Results Realty Group, committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, an exceptional service by Dorman's Jewelry. The answer is always Dorman's. By Star Beverage. No matter what type of weather, we are a convenient drive-through one-stop beer store. By Kogan Electric. Lighting the way for you. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Welcome back to Nittany Nation Overtime, Penn State, of course, with the win yesterday. Being up so big, Sean Clifford gets pulled, Daquan Robertson gets in and throws a touchdown pass. What, Shane, we'll start with you, what, what impressed you about his performance? Uh, to be able to be ready and execute whenever you're called upon, whenever that is. You know, you're always one ankle or broken helmet away from maybe being in there. So to get in, even though it's the end of a game, uh, to get in there and, and actually execute is, is good, to make a great throw and a great catch. Uh, and it made me smile because I see a number, number two backup quarterback right. going in there and doing well. So I, I thought it was a very good performance. Yeah. yeah, he had only thrown one pass in his career, and it was back in the 2019 season. He didn't even attempt a pass last year, which I found kind of curious why they didn't at least try to get him some snaps last year. <laughs> But you know he they came were in. And, five, why not? Yeah. Well, at some point, yeah. yeah. Well, you're blowing out Illinois yeah, in, in the you? finale. Why not throw him in there? Uh, but yeah, I mean, initially the protection wasn't great, but when he got to protection, he did a nice job. So you know, hopefully, as the season goes along, uh, at some point he's able to get even more snaps and maybe a little bit earlier in some of these games. Yeah, uh, James said he wanted to get him in with about nine or ten minutes to go, and then Ball State kept the ball. Uh, you know, I, I kind of was hoping that you put him in because you, you don't want to risk uh, an injury to your mm -hmm. starter when you're up 38-6 in a game like that. Uh, but, yeah, they, I think it ended up uh, working out. A cool aside there, uh, when Roberson was being recruited, he actually attended Penn State's football camp, which a lot of them do, and Sean Clifford was coaching at the camp. And he had already committed, so, so Clifford knew this guy was coming in. So that's the relationship that those two guys have. A lot of times you think it's all competition. I'm sure, Shane, again, this is another area that, that you know about. Yeah, everybody's competing, but these guys have a relationship that goes back and, and clearly support each other. It was good to see Clifford supporting Roberson. Oh, yeah, it's the quarterback room altogether. Yeah. You know, Matt, Matt McGloin, who's my roommate, and I room with Paul, Paul Jones back in the day, and, and Kev was, and Kevin Newsom, all these guys. Like, you spend so much time with them, become your friends. And you're all competitors, but, like, by all competing together, the rising tide lifts all the votes, you know, and then and you also have your, your teammates, you know, and your team matters to you. Um, so it's cool to see any of them have success. It sounds like a coach talking. Seriously, <laughs> that is cool. A back that up is quarterback a room there. Yeah. And any concerns? I overall, pretty impressive performance on both sides of the ball, but there's Neil, always, of course, Neil has to oh, rush to the I mean, you know, there's some special teams penalties. Um, you know, Stout, it was good to see him bounce back from a 45 yard yeah. miss. Um, but I think, you know, and also the developing of maybe, I think you have two really good receivers, a great receiver in Dodson and a really good one in Parker Washington, but I think they're still looking beyond the tight ends for those other options. Well, in fairness, they did spread the ball around to a lot of different young receivers. Listen, I'll go back to, you know, Neil was the one who was beating this drum in the press box, and at first I wasn't sure I agreed, but they should have gotten Roberson in earlier. I, I don't think there's any rule. So what happened was they were in the middle of a drive when the fourth quarter started. Mm -hmm. They left Clifford in. I don't think there's any rule that you can't take Clifford out at the start of the quarter. And I think given what Sean Clifford means to this team, his health, 
because you don't have experience depth. And given that Roberson doesn't have a lot of experience, I think they should have got him in earlier. What does it mean, kind of that mindset of waiting on the side, just waiting, 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 all right, we need to get in for the drive here. This drive needs to end so that I can get in. You What's say, that like? Uh, it's, it's one of those, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready kind of things. You know? So for me, at least, I knew when I got in, I just, just get the snap. Everything else, will, once I just do that one thing, everything else will take over. Trust your preparation um, and trust the guys around you. You know, a lot of, sometimes at the end of games, you're not with the starting guys. You know, maybe you would be if it was earlier, but uh, so you just trust the guys around you and just play football like you've been playing for however many years. Do you have any critiques of Clifford's performance yesterday? Um, I think it's some accuracy issues, you know, and that's, I think, kind of been his MO a little bit before, um, but those can be cleaned up. I mean, he's, no one's going to be perfect, actually. Um, I think my probably main concern is, dealing with expectations now. You're 2-0. Mm -hmm. So now it's not, it's, you're not dealing with 0-5 coming off a loss. You're dealing with, okay, how are we going to get do you know, this Saturday? Whenever the, all the lights are on and all the eyeballs are on you, you know, are we going to make this uh, too big of a thing you know, and lay an egg like, you know, sometime, or are we going to actually come through and play like we think we can play? You know? One thing I think he's done really well, there have been a couple situations this year where there's been a flag and, and he's recognized it's been a free play mm -hmm. where you can make a big play out of something like that. And I think that shows how much poise and in charge that he really uh, is. I also think when he's been inaccurate, he's usually gone, put it somewhere where the defender can't get it. Mm -hmm. So even if the offensive player is not getting it, he's airmailing it, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So definitely areas that he can clean up and get better, but so much improved from early last season. Awesome. So coming up after a quick break, we will give you our picks for next week and go over Nitwit of the Week. The Nitwits are being brought to you by NovaCare, Altoona and State College. We proudly support Penn State football. By Quatrini Rafferty, Attorneys at Law. Michael Roach, peace of mind after an injury or illness. By Lions 24-7 with Fight on State, your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Time now for our Nitwit of the Week and yours truly. Mm -hmm. One last week I picked the closest uh, Ball State score, so now I have one, you two both have zero, but the guest has one. So Your all career time. is almost complete. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all that I could have ever dreamed of. But now moving forward to next week, Auburn of course, what do we think for the whiteout? Well, this, this is uh, what guys come to Penn State to play in Amen. these kind of games, an SEC opponent. Um, you know, a lot of changes at Auburn over the last year or so. You know, they fired Miles on. Uh, they've really put up a lot of points these last couple weeks. I think it's going to be a great test for Penn State's defense. What do you think score is going to be for that? Well, I thought you, you go first. Oh, okay. Yeah. I picked Penn State 34-21. Ah, okay. Yeah. And that then. gives us a, a barometer. I'll go next. It's, it's cool to see an SEC team other than Alabama mm -hmm. willing to come up and play a school in the north, a, mm -hmm. a power school in the north. I mean, yeah. kudos to Auburn for doing that. Obviously, this is a team that's a little bit of a, a rebuilding mode. Uh, not quite sure what to expect on offense. The defense, the secondary is very good. I think ultimately the whiteout fuels Penn State and the, and the team as well to a 31-24 victory. Shane, your turn. I'm saying I'm saying we're going barn burner here, and I'm going to say 41-38. All right, oh, the, nice. the the defense gets tried a little bit, but comes through in the end. And it's strong. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was going to say Penn State uh, 31 and Auburn uh, 23. Do well, we? I really hope I didn't squeeze you. You squeeze yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It's going to land right it's on. Right on. <laughs> But no, it, it's, listen, to, to, to have this sort of, first you have the opener at, at Wisconsin, how cool was that? And then to have this sort of intersectional matchup uh, with game day there, mm -hmm. with a whiteout, I mean, what more can you ask hey, for? Hey, this can really set the stage to a great season. Yeah. If they can win this game, you know, Ohio State has lost, Iowa is up. I mean, a lot of things are taking place that Penn State can help create their own destiny. Arguably, Penn State had two wins on Saturday, a Penn State win and an Ohio State loss, if we're going to get super political with the fans there. Easy, easy. <laughs> you got, you, because well, you, Penn State still has to go out to Columbus, yeah. so I don't still, think we're going to yes, get on, yes. on the wrong side. It's hard to envision Ohio State losing too many more than one game at home this year. Yeah, so, and challenge. I think James Franklin's looking at it one game at a time. You can't of look, course, that's always yeah. his. But it's got, listen, it's, you're shaping up for a great game at Iowa, a great game at, at Columbus. I mean, this season, it's... Again, a lot of hinges on getting past Auburn. 
Awesome. Thank you for watching Nittany Nation Overtime. We will see you next week. The Nitwits are being brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning. By Reed and Selaney Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntington. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. By Remax Results Realty Group, committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry, the answer is always Dorman's. By Star Beverage, no matter what type of weather, we are a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. By Kogan Electric, lighting the way for you. By NovaCare, Altoona and State College, we proudly support Penn State football. By Quatrini Rafferty, Attorneys at Law, Michael Roach, peace of mind after an injury or illness. By Lions 24-7 with Fight on State, your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.